Google Cloud Text to Speech enables developers to synthesize natural sounding speech with 100 plus voices. The Dock and Sea Trials for Offshore Patrol Vessel BRP Gregorio del Pilar, PS15, which ran aground off Hasa Hasa Shoal in August 2018, have been scheduled for November. Philippine Navy, PN, spokesperson, Commander Benjo Negranza, made this statement when asked for updates regarding the repairs of the ship. BRP Gregorio del Pilar, PS15, was undocked and moved to Subic Bay Freeport Zone SBMA, Zambales. All other outstanding repairs are being completed now that PS15 is back on the water. Dock and sea trials are scheduled for the end of November this year, he said in a message to the Philippine news agency on Wednesday night. One of the ship's two variable pitch propellers was damaged, along with its propeller hub, after its grounding. Negranza earlier said the dry docking and other related repairs of BRP Gregorio del Pilar are expected to be completed by September. Nevertheless, the Philippine Navy exerts all efforts to remain vigilant and to uphold its mandate in guarding the country's waters. We are one with our countrymen in looking forward to PS-15's repair completion, he added. The Philippine Navy said difficulties in procuring spare parts and ongoing health issues had moved the completion of repairs to the Gregorio del Pilar BRP to the later part of 2021. BRP Gregorio del Pilar, PS-15, is the lead ship of her class of offshore patrol vessels of the Philippine Navy. She is the second ship to be named after Gregorio del Pilar, a Filipino revolutionary general known for his role at the Battle of Tirad Pass. She was originally designated as PF-15 from 2012 to mid-2016. Then the Navy adopted a new code designation system and she was redesignated as FF-15. In February 2019, the Navy downgraded the status of the entire class from frigate to patrol ship and redesignated her to PS-15. From 1967 to 2011, the ship was a Hamilton-class high-endurance cutter of the United States Coast Guard, known as USCGC Hamilton. The U.S. decommissioned the cutter on 28 March 2011, and the Philippines acquired it under the Excess Defense Articles and the Foreign Assistance Act. It is one of three ex-U.S. Coast Guard Hamilton-class cutters to serve the Philippine Navy. The Philippine Navy plans to modernize the entire ship of the class, with an initial program to upgrade the ship's sensors, and another program to improve its weapon systems. Several systems were acquired through U.S. Foreign Military Sales FMS, and Foreign Military Financing FMF, which includes the Bay Systems MK-38 mod. Two machine gun system, the Saban SPS-77C Giraffe AMB 3D Air, Surface Search Radar, and the FLIR system CFLIR-230 Electro-Optical, Infrared Camera. Meanwhile, the Philippine Navy will launch a program to acquire, install and integrate several other sensors into the ship, as part of the Horizon 2 phase of the revised AFP modernization program. Among those to be acquired are new combat management system, CMS, hull-mounted sonar, HMS, and a radar electronic support measures, RESM. Future upgrades are planned to install defensive and offensive missile systems and torpedo launchers, although funding is still being secured and might only be included in the next phase of the Navy's modernization program. The mission of the 16th Attack Squadron is to provide tactical air operations designed to destroy enemy forces and installations. Its specific functions include, providing close air support to ground and naval forces, performing tactical air reconnaissance, provides rocket, bomb, gun attacks on enemy forces and installations, and providing deployment of combat-ready forces in areas of operations as required by higher headquarters. The Eagles were born in the 1970s during the outbreak of hostilities in Mindanao when government forces and secessionists were engaged in a full-scale war, where the latter was strong in terms of personnel and firepower. Confronted by this problem, the military hastily laid down the framework for a tactical unit that would accomplish the necessary air support mission. Thus, on 1 August 1974, the Philippine Air Force witnessed the foundation of the 1st Tactical Squadron, the 16th Attack Squadron, whose primary mission is to perform tactical air operation designed to destroy enemy forces and facilities. Initially headed by Lt. Col. Santiago O. Pipitan, Jr., it was organized out of volunteer pilots from other units and a handful of enlisted personnel who, knowing the great risk, 
were willing to sacrifice and take up the burden of the task at hand. With 52 T-28D aircraft on its wings, the squadron performed a wide array of mission but it was the accurate delivery of air munitions to designated targets that this unit not only carved its name in the history of the Philippine Air Force, but the armed forces as well. During the late 70s, the Eagles were participating in large-scale joint operations against fortified MNLF strongholds in Zamboanga del Norte. By November 1991, the squadron started to receive OV-10A Broncos from the United States of America. These aircraft are proven to be an effective multi-role anti-insurgency platform. It was also expected to replace the aging and diminishing fleet of AT-28D Tora Toras. A total of 24 OV-10A Broncos were turned over by July 1992. With the arrival of the Broncos, the splendor of the squadron was revived. Aside from performing airstrike mission in support of ground forces, the aircraft was fitted to provide cloud seeding capability in order to help soften the impact of the El Niño phenomena. Thus, aside from being bombers, the Eagles were known as cloud seeder or rainmakers. By August 2003, the first batch of four OV-10Cs arrived from the Royal Air Force of Thailand. Furthermore, capability upgrade of several OV-10A to the four-bladed configurations was completed. To this day the Eagles are still ever vigilant protecting the peace and development of the nation. The OV-10 Bronco is an American twin turboprop light attack and observation aircraft. It was developed in the 1960s as a special aircraft for counterinsurgency, coin, combat, and one of its primary missions was as a forward air control FAC, aircraft. It can carry up to 3,200 pounds 1,450 kilograms, of external munitions, internal loads such as paratroopers or stretchers, and loiter for three or more hours. The OV-10 has a central nacelle containing pilots and cargo, and twin booms containing twin turboprop engines. The visually distinctive feature of the aircraft is the combination of the twin booms, with the horizontal stabilizer that connects them. The aircraft's design supported effective operations from forward bases. The OV-10 can perform short takeoffs and landings, including on aircraft carriers and large deck amphibious assault ships without using catapults or arresting wires. Further, the OV-10 was designed to take off and land on unimproved sites. Repairs could be made with ordinary tools. No ground equipment was required to start the engines. If necessary, the engines could operate on high-octane automobile fuel with only a slight loss of power. The aircraft had responsive handling and could fly for five and a half hours with external fuel tanks. The cockpit had extremely good visibility for a tandem pilot and co-pilot, provided by a wraparound greenhouse that was wider than the fuselage. North American Rockwell custom ejection seats were standard, with many successful ejections during service. With the second seat removed, it can carry 3,200 pounds, 1,500 kilograms, of cargo, five paratroopers, or two litter patients and an attendant. Empty weight was 6,969 pounds, 3,161 kilograms. Normal operating fueled weight with two crew was 9,908 pounds, 4,494 kilograms. Maximum takeoff weight was 14,446 pounds. 6,553 kilograms. The bottom of the fuselage bore sponsons or stub wings that improved flight performance by decreasing aerodynamic drag underneath the fuselage. The sponsons were mounted horizontally on the prototype. Testing caused them to be redesigned for production aircraft. The downward angle of the sponsons on production models ensured that stores carried on the sponsons jettisoned cleanly. Normally, four 7.62 mm, 0 .308 in, M60C machine guns were carried on the sponsons with the M60Cs accessed through a large forward opening hatch on the top of each sponson. The sponsons also had four racks to carry bombs, pods, or fuel. The wings outboard of the engines contained two additional racks, one per side. The Philippine Air Force PAF, received 24 OV-10 as from U.S. stocks in 1991, later followed by a further nine from the United States, and eight ex-Thai Air Force OV-10Cs in 2003-2004. The OV-10s are operated by the 16th Attack Squadron and 25th Composite Attack Squadron of the 15th Strike Wing, based in Sangli Point, Cavite. 
The Philippine Air Force flies Broncos on search and rescue and coin operations in various parts of the Philippines. The first two women combat pilots in the Philippine Air Force flew OV-10s with the 16th. 